All right, so today's the day. Boom. This is gonna be a really different video from what I'm used to making. It's gonna be really difficult for me to not only talk about this because it's heavy on my heart, but it's gonna be hard to stay organized because I really get anxiety and like adrenaline flowing through me when I think about it, let alone talk about it or view the video. So I'm gonna show um, in this video, high speed wreck. Very good. So right here, I let off because it's extremely established. I have lost the race. It's pretty difficult to see what happens here next, but essentially the white Lexus pulls out from the right side of the road, right into the path of the street bike. So I'm gonna play it twice so you can see. Oh my God. No! Oh, oh my God. No! Oh shit! Fuck! 911! You... Call 911! 911 now! Fuck! Go, film, 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 film. Go, go. Here, 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 go, go. Hey, motherfucker, don't leave. After the collision took place, the Lexus was facing northbound. By the time that I pulled past the wreck, he was facing now in my direction, southbound. So it was apparent to me that this guy was making an attempt to leave the scene of the accident. Pull the fuck over! Pull the fuck Pull the fuck I will shoot your ass! Hey, pull the fuck over! Pay close attention here, you can see that half of the street bike is broken off inside of the quarter panel rear bumper area and it knocks this guy off of his feet. Dude, like seriously, watching this over and they charged me with vehicular assault and not this guy. Hey, get his ass! Get his ass! Motherfucker, bro. Fuck. My fuck. Pretty much right here, my car is hitting boost cut. For everyone that doesn't know really anything about cars, it pretty much just means that my car has the power of a Honda Civic or the power of a, uh, a lawnmower or a torque wrench. Fuck. Fuck, bro. Fucking A! Oh my god, bro! No! No! Bro, no! Oh my fucking god, bro. No. Bro, he dipped! He fucking dipped! So right here, I'm not going to show, well, let's just call him Iron Man. He's really earned that name. We all call him Iron Man now because he has survived this wreck, but I'm not going to show him laying there. He requested that I do not show that, and I didn't want to anyways. Oh my fuck, bro. Mm -hmm. up right now this is the lexus driver leaving the scene somebody was following him and took this picture you can see the front fork of the street bike has snapped off and is wedged in the quarter panel rear bumper area of the car after this video is edited just never want to see the shit again but most importantly he's alive he, like everyone's safe okay everyone's safe he's gonna make a full recovery like everyone's okay you know we took a valuable lesson that you know you can't take life for granted at the snap of a finger everything can be just taken away from you just like that. So many things can happen that are outside of your control. So it's just really best to refrain from doing stupid shit. That's just like been my persona. It's like me doing stupid shit in cars. And like, unfortunately I had to learn the hard way that that's not the way for me. Now driving cars, like I can still go on a drift track. I can still go on a drag track if I want to race my car. So yeah, the good news is that um, I believe my video 
has helped him out significantly as far as like insurance and everything like that proving like what actually happened that at least the truth was shown regardless of you know how the laws are set up in washington state which i'm going to talk about what happened to me and why i don't have my evo 8 i have my keys but i don't have the car i want to still make this video and post this video you know it might have a negative effect in the courtroom i don't know but for me as long as i'm trying to do the right thing and i'm being transparent i don't feel like i'm doing any harm it's not how the courtroom works but that's how i operate so that's how we're doing things i'm going to tell you guys a story about getting my car taken away because i was in no sort of trouble that night a week went by and i flew out to uh, los angeles for a casting call for a tv show the casting call went great i thought so by the time i get out of the casting call the detective aaron parker called me and was like just checking up on me i can't remember the conversation but he's just calling me and he didn't tell me anything he didn't say anything about what was about to happen he just called me like checking in kind of like oh i want to get your sd card back to you whatever being sneaky i, I why you got to be sneaky with me i've been i've been honest and open with you guys and you're gonna call me and be all sneaky like that like i don't understand it so anyways 30 minutes after that my neighbor calls me says that the police are at my door that they're angry that they're looking for me and that they're towing my car and that i'm in all this trouble and so i'm confused i'm really confused because at this point i thought i was just doing the right thing and that i was valuable in their case i was going to help them do what they needed to do to bring justice to this situation but little did i know i was completely fucking myself big time uh, it is what it is. I, I wouldn't take anything back. Like, I did the right thing, and it is what it is. I knew it was relevant to, like, the wreck and everything, but I didn't know why they were gonna take my car, because I was like, okay, you know, they take cars for, like, evidence, you know? They take them for evidence, and why would they need my car as evidence? I already gave them the video evidence that they need. Why would they take my baby? I thought they were just investigating because they thought maybe I had a gun, because of what I said in the video. I will shoot your ass! Hey, pull the fuck over! I was like understanding, you know, I was like, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna try to call and see if I can just go and get my car. I book a flight back home ASAP, spent hella money, missed the flight. I completely lost the flight. It was like 300 something dollars. And then I bought an even more expensive ticket. So I spent a bunch of money flying home. And then by the time I get home, I learned that I can't just go get my car, that it's not just like Im impounded, like they seized it. And so I call the detective and then he leaves me this message. Hi Nathan, this is Detective Parker, Seattle Police Department, returning your phone call. Um, regarding your car. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of where things are going, um, the vehicle has been seized as evidence in our case, and um, we are sending you a notice of forfeiture. Uh, we, intend to for um, we intend to go through a civil forfeiture process with the vehicle. What? Um, it was used in a felony crime, and because of that, uh, then under RCW 10- I'm sorry, dot 105.010, if you look that up, um, if you use a vehicle in a felony crime, then it can be for, um, lost. You can actually lose the vehicle. Um, so that's our intent. Um, you are being looked at as the suspect in a vehicular assault case. Uh, yours was not the only video going. Um, you weren't the only one that told us about the, the, the racing or anything, but when somebody gets hurt racing, um, all parties that were racing involved are are subject to being charged. So, um, anyways, if you have any questions, give me a call. Uh, 206 233. After I got that message, it really set in. I felt just stabbed in the back and really confused. And I know I shouldn't have been racing, but like I did the right thing and, and then just backfired so hard. Like, if you were just paying attention to the screen while I was playing that voicemail, you can see in here, I'll show it again. It says, on the document that they sent me. Narcotics notice of seizure and intended forfeiture pursuant to RCW 69.50.505. That would mean that I am a drug dealer and that I bought my car with drug proceeds or it's something relevant to narcotics and that's why they took my car, which is not the case for me. So I was super confused and also very nervous. I thought maybe they planted drugs in my car or something. So I called the detective right away after I got this document. I couldn't get a hold of him, so I was freaking out and then he ended up calling me back and left a voicemail and this is what he said. Hi Nathan, this is Detective Parker, Seattle Police Department, returning your phone call from yesterday. Uh, don't don't let the narcotics um, title um, concern you. Uh, it's not like somebody found narcotics in your vehicle or anything like that. Um, it, our narcotics unit handles forfeiture type issues and so therefore uh, um, they have forms that they use. This isn't a separate action. There's just one action regarding your vehicle. Uh, so if you have any questions, 
Feel free to give me a call. 206. I just don't understand how they mess up on something like that. It's signed by the chief of police. Like, the chief of police looked at it and signed it. I don't know if they just signed shit without looking at it, but that's, I guess, what happened. Boom. Um, I get a phone call at some point in time, and they tell me in two days you have a court day, show up to court. Boom. They charge me with three things. They charge me with... Driving on suspended, which I understand. I just didn't know my license was suspended. Boom. Then they charged me with the reckless endangerment and a uh, felony charge, vehicular assault, which is so hard to understand. Boom. It was unfortunate that that happened, but I mean, you can see clearly in the video that I did not cause that collision whatsoever. Oh yeah, how I get the car back. The only way I can get the car back is if I do not get convicted with a felony. So if I get anything but a felony, I get my car back. So yeah, uh, I'm done talking about this shit. I hope I explained like everything and um, yeah, wish me luck. I'm gonna try to be responsible and do what I can to handle this and eat this up like a man. Boom.